Hey, it's Dr. DeCubilis here. Um, first of all, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe below because I give lots of information just like I'm gonna be talking about today. Now today, what we wanna talk about is going to be really the reports that you're getting from your doctors and how that helps show not only what type of pain that you're in, but actually conveys that in a way that the insurance company understands and the potential jury understands too. So again, I'm Dr. DeCubilis. I've been doing uh, this for 14 plus years, and I found a really big hole in the way that MRI reports are well reported. Uh, if you've ever seen an MRI report, the radiologist goes ahead and shows what they see. Let's say in this case, it's a herniated disc. Now that's, that's fine, that's perfectly fine, that's what they should be doing. However, that in itself does not describe the type of pain that you or your patient or uh, your client might be in. It doesn't describe why they're in pain. Yes, we have a herniated disc, but depending on what they're doing, their activities, what type of work they do, it all depends on how it's going to affect them. Especially when, let's say we have a herniated disc, they've been referred to an orthopedic surgeon or a neurosurgeon, and they're not a surgical candidate, how do we really talk about how severe this is and how it's affecting them? Because at that point, it's looked at, especially by an insurance company saying, well, they just have a herniated disc. It's a minor issue, it doesn't need surgery, that eh, can go away on its own. That's what it's looked at. And I saw this as a huge problem, especially in the personal injury community, and that's why I wanted to make sure we have a solution to that. So here's what we do. We wanna make sure we put together a very comprehensive report that's going to show exactly what's going on with this injury and how it's affecting the person. Now to do this, it takes quite a bit of time, but it's well worth it because this way, not only when it's submitted to the insurance company, it's going to show them what's going on with the patient specifically, but also it's going to be so easy to understand that a jury is going to completely get exactly why the person or you is having pain. So the first thing we have to understand is that when it comes to a herniated disc, there's gonna be multiple areas that can cause pain. The first is actually going to be the disc itself. Now the outer third of the disc is innervated by the recurrent meningeal nerve and that itself can cause pain. So it's really important because we forget that just a disc herniation or even a bulge can actually trigger symptoms. From there, we also look at how far out it goes. Because when we start talking about things like the fecal sac or even the spinal cord itself, those are more pain generators. And what a pain generator means is something that can cause pain to that individual. So we wanna make sure we look at all these different things. Now, we also have to look at, okay, well, how is this pain generator going to affect the person? Because let's say the person sits for most of their job and they notice pain comes on after they're sitting for more than 10 minutes. Well, how does that equate to the disc herniation that they have? How has that changed after they've had this herniation? Did, were they able to work more before and less now, or has it had no effect on them? These are all things that are very, very important to go over and make sure we put in a report, because this way we can kind of put everything together and explain how specifically this is affecting the person. So we wanna talk about all of that. But the other thing is we also have to explain if this is caused by an accident, injury, or trauma, how did that happen? How do we know it's caused by that accident, injury, or trauma? Well, there's lots of different ways to do that, especially because there's different ways we can actually age data herniated disc. Now, all of this comes from the research, but it's important to understand what you're looking at and how to do that. You don't just do it because you heard me talking about it really takes the amount of education and training to be able to do these things. So make sure you're doing everything that's based on evidence-based research. So when we talk about disc herniation, we wanna make sure we can actually show that this is from an accident, injury, or trauma that we're relating it to. Because if we can't, don't say that it is. We wanna work in fact, not in theory, and you never wanna put anything or have a doctor put anything in their notes that is not true. The doctor's job is to report on the findings not to try to win the case. That's the attorney's job. But the doctor wants to give them all the ammunition about the facts of the case and the injury that they're going to need to potentially win. Because as doctors, we don't necessarily care if the case is won or lost. What we care about is giving proper treatment and diagnosis to our patient. And that's how it should be. No doctor should be talking about, I can win your case, I can help you win this case. That's not something you want to have happen. What you wanna hear is you wanna have the doctor saying, I can make sure we put all of the relevant details into a report to show exactly the mechanism of injury 
and why you're having pain with the prognosis and link that to a treatment, treatment plan and outcome measures. That's what you want. And that's what we do here. So we wanna make sure that we can actually compare that because here's the other thing. Let's say we have a disc herniation. Your client has suffered it, you've suffered a disc herniation, but we cannot prove with any reasonable certainty that it was from the accident or the injury. Well, there's not much we can do there. If we can't do that, then A, the first step is to reach out to someone who has a little bit more experience and see if maybe they can find something that you're missing, or B, we just don't really have a case, we don't have an argument there. Don't make anything up, and you don't want a doctor that's gonna make anything up. So that's really the plan, is when we get this disc herniation, especially when we're involved in an injury case, we wanna make sure that we're A, looking at all of the causes of pain, all of the pain generators, and then B, we wanna make sure we can actually relate that to the accident or the injury. That's number two. And there's ways to do that. Like I said, there's age dating ways. I think there's up to 18 different ways you can age date a herniated disc right now. Making sure we do all that and everything is backed by evidence-based research. We've got to cite the research in that as well. That's what's going to be able to prove everything, not your opinion. We don't want a report that just says, in my opinion and my practicing of X amount of years, that's not going to be good enough because there's also another doctor who's been practicing just as long, if not longer, who can have a different opinion. Because opinions are, you've heard the whole thing, everyone has their own opinion, right? We wanna deal in facts, facts and research, be able to prove everything. And that's why a proper report, a demonstrative type report that goes over all these details and much more, there's way more that goes into it, and I don't have time to go over it in this video, but doing all of those different things, it's what's gonna be actually giving you all of the material you need to not only feel confident that your treatment is going to be the right kind of treatment, but also if you're an attorney, confident that you're going to be able to prove that this injury was caused by the crash or whatever it was that happened, and you're going to be able to show that to the insurance company or the jury. So again, I'm Dr. DeCubulus. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I know a lot of this stuff is new, maybe a new concept to you or something that's not talked about feel free to reach out to me. I'm always available to answer questions and help out in any way I can.